we're going to talk about something that probably most folks on this call don't even know exist, um, nor less um, how these fraudsters actually transact with each other. All right. We're all familiar with the Internet, right? We're all on the Internet every day. We shop for things. You buy things. You book trips. You look up and research things in whole nine yards. And, and if you think of the Internet a little bit as an iceberg, you know, you've always heard the story that the amount of the iceberg that's out of the water, there's like 80 or 90 percent of it that's floating under the water. And so you don't see it. It looks like just a little hunk of ice. But what's under the water is 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 mammoth and could be very damaging if a boat ran into it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there's something called the dark web, which is the equivalent of what's under the water of an iceberg. There's an entire portion of the Internet that is not reachable through your typical um, Google you know, browser, for example, your Safari you know, interface or whatever. Um, but bad guys know how to get to it. And it's an entire operation of underwater criminal activity in most cases, pornography in another. Um, there's just a lot of things that run around in the dark web that you know the folks on this call are not participating in. But for what we're finding, and, and we just started working with a new company called Q6 Cyber, that is doing something that is incredibly interesting because they actually have set up shop. The guys that founded it are former NSA, former Marines, super deep security, and they've gone now into private business. And they basically go out and they scan the dark web looking for information that is about our bank and our town and or our customers. The check you're looking at on the screen right now is a check drawn on one of the customers of First Community Bank and Trust. And that check for a little over $10,000 was put up for sale on the dark web so that someone could take that image, recreate it, reissue it to a different person, maybe change the dollar amount and try to actually pass that check against our customer's account. We caught this one, but this check was for sale. You could have gone out on the dark web if you knew what you were doing, bought this check image, then the, the fraudster, you can see then on the this photo that the bottom is covered up. That's covering up the routing number and the account number. But when you buy the check, they expose that. So now you have my customer's name, you have my bank information, you know who it was paid to, they're gonna change that. The dollar amount and all the routing information, check number and account number on the bottom of the check. And you can buy that. I mean, you can pay 20, 40, 50 bucks to buy this $10,000 check that Jen, you're gonna alter and then deposit it on your own account because you're going to put it in your name or a, a, a rogue company's name and then submit it to and try to clear it against our bank. This kind of stuff is going on every day. And we are now searching over 10,000 sites with our partner Q6 looking for activity for fraudulent checks drawn against or potentially could be drawn against our bank and that are for sale. Obviously, if we see one of these items that is out there for sale, we can stop, pay it, and alert our customer before this item gets bought, re-engineered, and then tried to be you know, delivered to the bank. Absolutely unbelievable activity. And when you go out on these sites to see what's going on, it's just mind-blowing to think that there is an entire criminal enterprise out there selling checks of financial institutions all over the country trying to perpetrate fraud.